Welcome to the Movie Reactor. Today I will show you a crime drama film from 1972 titled The Godfather. Make sure to like and or subscribe and leave a comment below to help advise on how to make this channel more intriguing for you. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Connie Corleone and Carlo Rizzi's wedding reception is being attended by guests in late summer 1945. Friends and acquaintances refer to Vito, the boss of the Corleone Mafia, as Godfather. He and Tom Hagen, the Corleone family attorney, are listening to requests for favors since, in accordance with Italian custom, no Sicilian can refuse a request on his daughter's wedding day. Amerigo Bonasser, a successful mortician and friend of the Don, is one of the individuals who asks the Don for a favor. Amerigo's daughter was viciously beaten by two young men after she rejected their advances, the criminals received light punishment from the presiding court. The Don is disappointed in Bonasera because of Corleone's shady business operations, which prevented Bonasera from having much contact with the Don. The link between the godmother of Bonasera's disgraced daughter and the Don's wife allows the Don to gain the undertaker's new loyalty. In exchange for future service, the Don consents to have his men punish the guilty young men in a non-lethal manner. The Don's youngest son Michael, a decorated U.S. Marine hero who served in World War II, arrives at the wedding and tells his girlfriend Kay Adams' family stories, informing her of his father's criminal life. He reassures her that he is different from his family and doesn't intend to join them in their criminal dealings. As Michael introduces Kay to Frito, Michael's next elder brother, who is somewhat dim-witted and somewhat inebriated by the time he finds Michael at the party, the Don's eldest son, Santino, often known by his nickname Sonny, is married but a hot-tempered philanderer who slips into a bedroom to have sex with Lucy Mancini, one of Connie's bridesmaids. Santino is next in line to succeed his father as Don when he retires. Tom Hagen, who was homeless when he met Sonny in Manhattan's Little Italy area, is not a biological relative of the Don family, but is still regarded as one of his sons because the Don took Tom in and took care of his upbringing and schooling. Despite not being of Sicilian descent, Tom is now a skilled lawyer who is being prepared for the key role as consigliere to the Don. The well-known singer Johnny Fontaine Corleone's godson is also a visitor at the party. He has traveled from Hollywood to ask Vito for assistance in getting a role in a movie that may revive his waning career. Don Corleone tells Johnny, I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Jack Woltz, the chairman of the studio, rejects Fontaine's application for the role, a character who is quite similar to Johnny himself, which will make him an even bigger fame. The Don also answers a request from the baker, Nazarene, who prepared Connie's wedding cake, who wants his nephew Enzo to become an American citizen, and receives congratulations from Luca Brassi, a formidable enforcer in the criminal underworld. Hagen is sent to visit Woltz in Los Angeles after the wedding, but Woltz yells at him and says he won't ever use Fontaine for the part. Woltz has resentment toward Fontaine because the latter seduced and ruined the starlet he had been pursuing for fame and having a sexual relationship with. But when Woltz awakens early the following morning and discovers something wet in his bed, he is persuaded to grant Johnny the part. He screams in terror as he pulls back the sheets to see himself in a pool of blood and the severed head of his prized $600,000 stud horse, Khartoum, lying next to him. The family meets with Virgil the Turk Salazzo, who is supported by the competing Tataglia family, after Hagen returns. For the purpose of importing and selling heroin, he approaches Don Corleone for financial support as well as political and legal protection. Despite the enormous profit to be had, Vito Corleone declines, claiming that doing so would undermine his political influence because the judges and politicians he has allied himself with over the course of many years would break off their friendships with him. Sonny, the Don's eldest son who had earlier encouraged the family to engage in the drug trade, breaks ranks during the meeting and starts to doubt Salazzo's claims that the Tataglia family will guarantee the Corleone family's investment. Sonny's father silences him with a single glance after becoming enraged at his disagreement with a non-family member and subsequently reprimands him in private. Then Don Corleone sends Luca Brassi to spy on Salazzo's organization and bring back intelligence. Brassi is stabbed in the hand by Salazzo during the meeting when he is stooping to allow Bruno Tataglia to light his cigarette, 
and he is then garroted by an assassin. Don Corleone is shot and thought killed in an attempted assassination outside of his office shortly after his meeting with Salazzo, and it is not immediately clear if he survived. Since Polly Gatto, the Don's regular bodyguard, had to miss work due to illness, Frito Corleone was given the responsibility of driving and protecting his father. Being unable to shoot back and making mistakes with his rifle, Frito demonstrates his incapacity. Sonny instructs Clemens, one of his father's two caporgimes, to locate Polly and bring him to the Don's residence after learning about the Don being shot and Polly's departure. Tom Hagen is kidnapped by Salazzo, who holds him captive for several hours until convincing him to make the same bargain he did with Sonny's father. Salazzo learns the Don has survived the assassination attempt when Tom is freed. Tom is sternly instructed by him to persuade Sonny to accept his offer. Furious, Sonny refuses to take it into account and gives the Tataglias the choice of turning over Salazzo or engaging in a protracted, bloody, and expensive, for both sides, gang war. They decline and instead send Sonny a Sicilian message, two fresh fish wrapped in Luca Brassi's bulletproof vest, informing the Corleones that Luca Brassi sleeps with the fishes. Later, Clemens drives Polly and Rocco Lampone, one of the family's hitmen, into Manhattan. If the crime war breaks out, Sonny wants to go to the mattresses and put up beds and apartments for the Corleone button men to run their businesses from. Clemens instructs Polly to stop the car in a remote location so he can urinate on the way back from Manhattan. Polly is fatally shot by Rocco, who then takes Clemens and flees with Polly and the automobile. After supper with Kay at her hotel, Michael, who the other Mafia families view as a civilian and not engaged in mob activity, goes to see his father at a small private hospital. When he arrives, he is startled to discover that no one is watching over him. A nurse explains that the men were breaking hospital rules and were asked to leave by the police about ten minutes prior to Mike's arrival. He phones Sonny for assistance, takes his father to another room, and goes outside to keep an eye on the door after realizing that his father is once more being set up to be assassinated. Enzo the baker, who has visited the hospital to pay his respects, offers his assistance to Michael. They deceive Salazzo's soldiers as they pass by by bluffing together. Soon after, the unscrupulous Captain McCluskey is brought in by police cars. When Michael suggests that Salazzo bribed McCluskey to frame his father, McCluskey savagely hits Michael in the cheek and fractures his jaw. Just then, Hagen, who is protecting Don Corleone, shows up with private detectives armed with permits, and he takes the hurt Michael home. Captain McCluskey will act as Salazzo's bodyguard at the meeting with the Corleones that Salazzo seeks after the hospital attack that nearly cost the Don his life. Sonny and the other senior family members laugh when Michael offers to kill both men during the meeting. Nevertheless, Michael persuades them that he is serious and that killing Salazzo and McCluskey is in the family's best interests. It's not personal. It's all about business. Michael won't be viewed as the Corleone's dubious envoy because he is regarded as a civilian. Michael contends that McCluskey is fair game because he is dishonest and has shady relationships with Salazzo, despite the fact that police officers are often off limits for hits. Michael also makes the implication that newspaper writers employed by the Corleone family would enjoy writing stories about a dishonest police captain. Clemens meets with Michael and gives him a tiny pistol after taping the trigger and grip to hide any fingerprint traces. He advises Michael to leave the pistol behind and gives him instructions on how to carry out the murder. A war, such as the one that will be sparked by the murders of Salazzo and McCluskey, is required roughly every five to ten years to clear out the ambition and resentment that develops between the five families. He also tells Michael that his family is very proud of him for becoming a war hero during his time in the Marines. Michael receives assurance from Clemenza that he can do the job well and that everything will go according to plan. Before Michael, Salazzo, and McCluskey arrive, the Corleone's informers are supposed to locate the meeting's location and hide the handgun. Before leaving for the meeting, Sonny promises Michael that he will let Kay know that they won't be saying goodbye. Before the meeting, McCluskey searches Michael for weapons but finds none during the search in the Bronx's little Italian eatery. 
After speaking in Italian for a while with Salazzo, Michael excuses himself to visit the restroom, where he finds the hidden revolver. When he gets back to the table, he shoots McCluskey first before killing Salazzo. While the Corleone family gears up for all-out conflict with the five families, who are unified against the Corleones, as well as a general crackdown on the mafia by the police and the officials, Michael is ordered to hide in Sicily. The Don is devastated to find that Michael killed Salazzo and McCluskey three months later when he comes home from the hospital. The marriage of Connie and Carlo is breaking down in the meantime. Carlo's alleged infidelity and his possessive manner toward Connie are common topics of contention between them. No one, not even a high-ranking mafia don, is permitted to become involved in a married couple's personal issues in Italy whether they entail infidelity, money, or domestic violence. Connie tells Sonny that Carlo hit her when she questioned him about having an affair when he noticed a bruise on her face one day. In the midst of a busy street, Sonny finds Carlo and violently beats him for torturing the pregnant Connie. He then threatens to murder Carlo if he ever hurts Connie again. In retaliation, a furious Carlo concocts a plan to have Sonny killed alongside the Corleone's main adversaries Tataglia and Don Emilio Barzini. Later, knowing that Connie will answer, Carlo has one of his mistresses call his home. Connie is asked by the woman to tell Carlo not to meet with her tonight. Connie, who is quite pregnant and upset, throws a fit and scatters the dinner plates throughout the kitchen and dining area. In order to draw Sonny outside and away from the Corleone complex, Carlo uses the altercation to beat Connie. Sonny is furious and drives off, alone and unprotected, to carry out his threat against Carlo after Connie calls the compound to report that Carlo has assaulted Connie once more. On his way to Connie and Carlo's residence, Sonny is ambushed at a toll booth on the Long Island Causeway by several cars of hitmen brandishing Thompson submachine pistols. Sonny is then brutally shot to death. The Don receives word of Sonny's murder through Tom Hagen, and he asks Bonasura for permission to personally oversee the embalming of Sonny's body. Instead of seeking retribution for the death of Sonny, Don Corleone meets with the leaders of the five families to discuss a truce. In addition to depleting all of their resources and endangering their lives, the conflict must be resolved in order for Michael to return home safely. Vito reverses his former position and accepts that the Corleone family will support Tataglia's heroin trade as long as it is controlled and not sold to minors. Despite exhibiting early indications of senility, Don Corleone concludes at the meeting that Don Barzini, not Tataglia, was ultimately responsible for the outbreak of the mob war and son is death. Michael endures his exile in Sicily with patience, being guarded by an old family friend named Don Tomasino. Michael and his constant bodyguards, Carlo and Fabrizio, roam aimlessly over the countryside. In a tiny town, Michael meets a Polonia Vitelli, the lovely young daughter of a bar owner, and they begin dating. They engage in traditional Sicilian courtship and marriage, but soon Michael's presence is discovered by Corleone foes. One day, Tomasino delivers the unfavorable news of Sonny's murder to Michael as he is teaching his new wife to drive. He desires to transport Michael to a more secure area. As the pair prepares to leave, a rigged car, intended for Michael, explodes on ignition, killing a Polonia. Michael, who witnessed the explosion, notices Fabrizio hastily leaving the premises seconds before the explosion, implicating him in the assassination attempt. Michael goes back to his house knowing he will be safe. After a total of four years apart, three in Italy and one in America, he meets up with his former flame K more than a year later, in 1950. He declares his desire for them to get married. Kay accepts his offer despite being annoyed that he took so long to get in touch with her. Michael is in control now that Don Vito is semi-retired, Sonny is deceased, and middle brother Frito is deemed unable to operate the family firm. Michael assures Kay that he will fully legalize the family business within five years. Two years later, Clemenza and Sal Tessio beg permission to retaliate against the Barzini family because they feel bullied by them but Michael turns them down. After moving the family business to Nevada, he intends for Clemenza and Tessio to split off and start their own families in the New York region. Michael also assures Carlo, Connie's husband, 
that he will serve as his right-hand man in Nevada, oblivious to his involvement in Sonna's murder. Tom Hagen is no longer the consigliere, instead, Vito is the consigliere and acts as the family's attorney. Hagen questions Michael in private about his elevation in rank and the covert establishment of a new government of soldiers by Rocco Lampo. Don Vito explains to Hagen that Michael is acting on his advice. About a year later, Michael makes a trip to Las Vegas where he meets with Mo Green, Alex Rocco, a wealthy and cunning casino owner seeking to diversify his business ventures. After the Don's attempted murder, Frito had been dispatched to Las Vegas to study with Green about the gambling industry. Michael makes an arrogant attempt to buy Green out, but he is angrily rejected. Green thinks Barzini will give him a better deal and that the Corleones are weak. Frito sides with Mo during the tense negotiation between Michael and Mo. Michael issues Frito a warning after Mo abruptly leaves the meeting, telling him never to take sides with anyone against the family. Michael comes back home. In a private conversation, Vito shares his belief that Michael will be killed by the family's adversaries, who will set up a meeting as a cover for the crime. Vito also admits that he had always hoped his youngest son would hold legitimate power as a senator or governor, and that he had never actually intended for Michael to lead a life of crime. A few months later, while playing with his young grandson Anthony, in his tomato garden, Vito passes away suddenly. Tessio delivers a meeting request to Barzini at the funeral, revealing himself to be the traitor Vito had been expecting. Kay asks Michael if he'll accept to serve as the baby boy's godfather for Connie and Carlo. Michael agrees, taking advantage of the chance to get rid of the other five families as rivals while also using the baptism as a defense. During the ceremony, there are two murders that happen at once. A shotgun-wielding Clemens shoots Don Stracci and his bodyguard to death in a hotel elevator. An unnamed assailant shoots Mo Green through the eye while he is receiving a massage, killing him. The St. Regis Hotel spinning door traps Don Cunio, who is then fatally shot by soldier Willie Sixsight. Rocco Lampone and an unidentified companion murder Don Tataglia in bed alongside a prostitute. Al Neri, dressed as his former police outfit, shoots Don Barzini, his bodyguard, and his driver to death on the steps of his office building. Tessio thinks he and Hagen are headed to the meeting he has set up between Michael and Barzini after the baptism. Instead, as Hagen moves away, he is surrounded by Willie Sixeye and other button men. Tessio admits to having betrayed Michael after learning that Michael has exposed him, telling Hagen that he has always respected Michael and that his treachery was only business. For old time's sake, he asks Tom if he may let him go, but Tom declines. Driven away and never seen again, Tessio. After being reached by Barzini personally, Michael confronts Carlo about the killing of Sonny and pushes him to acknowledge his involvement in planning the ambush. The primary members of Barzini's personal security who assassinated Sonny were. Carlo is promised by Michael that he won't be killed, but that he will be barred from any family business as payment. A plane ticket to exile in Las Vegas is given to Carlo. Clemens, acting under Michael's direction, instantly garrots Carlo to death as soon as he enters a vehicle bound for the airport. Later, as movers remove the furniture in preparation for the family's trip to Nevada, a frantic Connie confronts Michael at the Corleone Ranch. She claims that he killed Carlo to exact revenge for both his cruel treatment of her and his alleged involvement in Sonny's death. She also claims that he cunningly waited until their father passed away so Vito couldn't intervene. After Connie is removed from the home, Kay asks Michael about Connie's accusation, but he declines to comment and warns her not to inquire about his company or his occupation. She pushes, and Michael flatly lies to reassure his wife that he had nothing to do with Carlo's passing. Kay feels relieved that he is true. Clemenza and the new Caporgimes Rocco Lampone and Al Neri arrive and pay their respects to Michael as the movie comes to a close. Clemenza gives Michael a kiss on the hand and addresses him as Don Corleone. Kay observes as the office door closes, 